All right, today I'm going to teach you guys some religious vocabulary. Some religious vocabulary. Hey, if you like learning about all kinds of different topics in English, then you've come to the right place to Mad English TV, so you should consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much to all my subscribers. Okay, so my last video was about the spiritual realm, right? The spiritual realm. You know, we learned words like angels, demons, manifestation, right? So if you haven't seen this video, you know, you should go watch it at the end of this video. I'll put, I'll put the link to it somewhere up here at the end of this video. Okay, so today we're going to talk more about religious language. Now, the reason I use the word language here is because, you know, it's almost like learning a whole new language, right? There's so many, so many new words, you know, when you're talking about all different kinds of religions, you know, and some of these words are really big, so it can be sort of intimidating. You know, it's almost like, it feels like you're learning a whole new language. And actually, sometimes Christians joke about it. They say, you know, they're speaking Christianese. If you listen to two Christians talking with each other, you know, you might not understand some of the words or the phrases that they use if you're not a Christian, right? So Christians sometimes joke about this. They say they're speaking Christianese. It's like their own language, right? Even though it's English, it's sort of a, a special kind of English called, called Christianese. It's just a joke, right? But, uh, you know, every religion is like this, right? Like in Islam, you know, you have words like jinn, Kaaba, Hajj, right? I mean, th those words are just very specific to Islam, right? And uh, a few months ago, maybe a month or two ago, I read the Bhagavad Gita, which is one of the holy books in Hinduism, and I came across this word here, demigod. Demigod. What is it? Do you know what a demigod is? You know, I hadn't really seen this word. It was sort of new for me. I thought, hmm, what is a demigod? Okay, so I, I looked it up, okay? Um, so, you know, that's how it is. Some, some, in some religions, right, every religion sort of has its own, its own set of vocabulary, right? Like demigod is sort of specific to Hinduism. Hajj is specific to Islam. You know, a word like trinity is specific to Christianity, right? But that being said, there are, there are lots of words that that sort of relate to all religions, okay? Words like deity, apostasy, you know, words like that can be, can be used in every religion. So in this lesson, I want to teach you guys some, some really, really important words that you need to know, you know, if you want to have a religious discussion, you know, if you want to talk to your friend or talk to your neighbor or talk to your family member about, about religion in English, Okay, you need to know these words that I'm going to teach you in this lesson. Okay, so God, right? When we talk about God, um, we can use words like deity or divine, okay? If you hear someone talk about a deity, that means a God, okay? So maybe they believe in, in lots of deities, okay? That means they believe in lots of different gods, okay? And if something has a divine nature, right, then, then that means it's like it has the nature of God, Okay, so, you know, very often you'll hear these two words when we're talking about God. God is a deity, and God has a divine, some sort of divine aspects, right? That means we're talking about, specifically about God. Right now, remember in my last lesson, I taught you guys the word being, right? Like angels are beings, demons are beings, God is a being, humans are beings. Okay, so that's the word being. Okay, so God is a being. Uh, but angels are, are, are not deities, okay? Demons are not deities, okay? Humans are not deities, okay? So, so these words specifically, you know, even though God is a being, God is also a deity and God is also divine, okay? So these two words are sort of, sort of reserved just for God, okay? So when we're talking about a demigod, okay, demi, that sort of means lesser, okay? We're talking about a god with lesser divine status, Okay, lesser divine. Now, I, I don't understand exactly how this works, right? In Hinduism, you know, there are a lot of gods. I guess, I guess some gods are higher, you know, some gods are lower. If you're a Hindu, let me know down in the comments, you know, what, how, how do you explain, you know, explain it to me. I'm interested to know, you know, if, if you understand, you know, give me a summary. What, what is a summary of Hinduism? Actually, before I made this lesson, I searched on Google, you know, how many gods are there in Hinduism? And I found this, 33 million gods. 
Okay, so according to Google, Hinduism has 33 million. That's that's a lot of gods. That's a, that's a really that's a huge number. You know, how do you remember all their names? Do you know all the names of the 33 million gods or or do you just know a few of them? How many do you know? Um, you know, maybe you know, maybe you just have a few that that are important to you or a few that you learned. I don't know. You know, just just let me know if you're a Hindu. Give me give me some knowledge about about Hinduism. Give me some knowledge about, you know, how many gods, you know, you know, how many names, you know, how many gods you worship, maybe or something. I really I'm sort of clueless about this, but I want to I want to have a bit more knowledge about this. So so let me know down in the comments. OK, so Hinduism is an example of polytheism. Okay, polytheism. Poly means many, okay? And theism means belief in God, okay? So Hindus believe in many gods. That's what polytheism means. It means that you believe in, well, in this case, 33 million gods, okay? Now, another kind of religion is, is monotheism, right? Religions like Islam, Christianity, Judaism are examples of monotheism. Mono means one. Okay, so one God. Okay, one, not 33 million. <laughs> okay, so I guess there's a range, right? You know, I don't know all the religions in the world. Maybe maybe some religions believe in like 10 or 100, and then you got all the way till, to 33 million. Okay, so there's, there's, a, there's a huge range here of gods, but, but mono means one. Okay, now no God that is atheism, right? If, if you don't believe in God, you're pretty sure there's no God, right? That's, uh, that's then you're an atheist, right? A an atheist just believes that there, there is no spiritual realm, right? No angels, no demons, no heaven, no hell, nothing. It's just this. This is what we have. This world, everything you can see, everything you can touch, right? You can touch your skin, you can touch your microphone, your laptop. Okay, that's real. If, some, if you can't see something, right, it's, it's not really real. Now, now there's another kind of, of belief that's agnosticism. That is maybe, there, maybe there is a God. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, you're not really sure. So if you think, you know, maybe there is a God, but there's just no way for us to know. There, there's, there's no way for us to know if there is or isn't. Okay, then you could be, you could be called uh, an agnostic. So if you are an atheist, that's no, no God, uh, a theist, okay, theism, right? The belief in theism is just a belief in, yes, gods, right? Doesn't matter if it's one God or a million gods, right? That's called theism. Okay, agnosticism is unsure, right? So everybody is, is basically one of these three, right? Either, either, you know, atheism, no gods, you're sure there's no gods. Theism, yes, there is a god or many gods. And then agnosticism is just unsure. Okay, um, now take a look at how these words change forms. Okay, so here is the belief, right? Atheism, uh, theism, and agnosticism. But when you say it, like when you're talking about yourself, you would say, I am an atheist. I am a theist. I am an agnostic. Okay, so look at this one. This one doesn't really follow the pattern, right? So here it's ism and then ist. Ism, ist. Ism, tick. Okay, so this one's sort of the odd one out, okay? So, so just pay attention to how, how those words sort of change forms. When we're talking about the belief, you know, they sort of end in ism. And when you're talking about, you know, something that you are, then, uh, then it sort of ends in ist. Or if you're an agnostic, then it's agnostic, not agnotist or ag agnosticist. You know, you'd think that would be that way, but it's not. It's just agnostic. Okay, now look at this guy. This guy says, I'm a nominal Christian. I'm a nominal Christian. What does that mean? Do you know what that means? Okay, well, nominal means by name only. Okay, so there are a lot of people in the world who just call themselves a certain religion. They say, I'm a Christian or I'm a Muslim, or I'm a Buddhist, right? It's just, it's just, it's just the, the name they take on, right? But, but they're not very serious about it, you know? Um, like, like nominal Christians, nominal Christians probably don't read the Bible, you know, they don't go to church, uh, they don't pray, but they still call themselves Christians, right? So that's an example of a nominal Christian. Now, the opposite of the word nominal is devout, 
okay? If you are a devout believer, like a devout Muslim or a devout Christian, okay, that means you are zealous, okay? That means you are committed. That means you are passionate, right? You take your religion really seriously, okay? Zealous, not jealous. Okay, jealous is a different word. Zealous uh, just means really passionate, okay? Wholehearted, you know, you're just serious about, about your religion, okay? So if you are a devout believer in your religion, that means uh, you're not nominal, okay? So nominal means you're, you're just by name only, and then if you are devout, you're raring to go, raring to go. That means you're, you're excited about it, you're ready. So very often we can use the word believer when we're talking about a person who, who you know, practices a faith, right? Uh, so if we're talking about, uh, let's say, Christianity, I could ask you, are you a believer? And you could say, yes, I'm a believer, or you could say, no, I'm a non-believer, okay? So a non-believer is a person who, you know, doesn't, doesn't have faith in that religion. So it sort of depends on the context, right? If we're talking about, if we're talking about Islam, then a believer would mean a person who believes in, you know, in the religion of Islam. If we're talking about Christianity, then the word believer, you know, would mean a person who follows Christianity. Okay, so, so you can describe yourself as a believer or a non-believer. Now, here's a word that is important that you will definitely hear if you have, like, a, a religious discussion with someone, okay? And that is theology. Theology, okay? This word, this suffix here, a suffix is sort of a, a part of a word at the end, and a prefix is a part of the word at the beginning, right? So the suffix ology means to study, okay, like biology. You know, maybe you studied biology in, in college, okay? So biology, that's a study, right? That's a study of like the body is a study of life, right? Or, uh, or geology, you know, geology is the study of the earth, right? Rocks and minerals and that kind of stuff, right? So theology is the study of God. Okay, these, these sort of T-H-E, remember, remember theist, theism, right? So when you see these three letters in a word, the, that's, uh, that's referring to God, okay? So theology means the study of God, right? I mean, we're talking about like, who, who is God? You know, what, what is God like? You know, I guess the first question, the first question a person needs to ask is, is does God exist, right? If they answer that with yes, then the next question is, can God be known? Right? Can you know anything about God or not? If no, then you're an agnostic, right? But if yes, if you think God, God must be, you know, somehow knowable, right? Then the next question is, who? You know, who, who, who is God? Who, who, you know, where is God? What, what, what is God like? You know, what does God want? <laughs> right? Those kinds of questions, right? So, so that's what theology is, okay? Theology is the belief about the nature of God. Now, a similar word is doctrine, okay? Doctrine. Doctrine means a set of beliefs, okay? So these two words are very similar, theology and doctrine. You know, sometimes you hear people say, you know, good, good doctrine and bad doctrine, good theology and bad theology. You know, for example, you might hear someone say, that pastor, the pastor of that church over there, you know, I, I go to that church, the pastor of that church, he has good theology, he has good doctrine. That means he has a correct understanding of God or the Bible. Okay, he has a correct understanding. You know, for example, if, if the pastor, a pastor is a leader of a church. If you didn't know, a pastor is like the leader of a, of a Protestant church. In Catholicism, the leader is like a priest, but in, uh, in Protestant, sort of the Protestant um, denominations of Christianity, the leader is called a pastor. Okay, so if a pastor says this, God loves you. Right, that's a, that's correct theology. That's that's good doctrine, right? Because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says God loves everybody, right? You know, but if if the pastor says God hates you, you know, then then the pastor, well, the pastor has bad doctrine, right? Uh, he didn't read the whole Bible. He didn't he didn't uh, he didn't think about who who is God, right? He's a wrong understanding of who God is. He has a wrong set of beliefs. Now take a look at these people here. Okay, all these people, actually all these people are the same religion. Okay, so imagine this as a religion. Now, the people in here all have sort of, sort of the same beliefs about their religion. Okay, sort of just the standard beliefs. So we could call that sort of the orthodox, orthodox views, 
or orthodox beliefs. Okay, orthodox just sort of means standard, you know, you know, very normal, very common. You know, like if, if you talk about orthodox Islam, you know, you're sort of talking about, about what everybody agrees on is true. Okay, or if you're talking about like orthodox Christianity, you know, sort of orthodox doctrine or orthodox theology. We're talking about something that is just very standard, right? Everybody sort of agrees on that. But this guy, this guy doesn't, okay? This guy's a bit extreme. He's gone a bit wild, okay? So he still calls himself the same religion as these guys, but these guys don't accept him, right? Because he's he, he, doesn't, he doesn't follow orthodox beliefs. Yeah, people have small differences, right? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about some, something big here. Okay, so if this guy does it, if this guy rejects like some of, the, some of the main doctrines in a religion, these people are not going to be happy, right? And they're gonna call him something. What are they gonna say? They're gonna say, you're a, you're a heretic, right? You're a heretic. Okay, heretic, that's heresy. Okay, heresy is false doctrine. Okay, false doctrine. Remember, doctrine is like a set of beliefs. Now, when we use this word, it's, it's, it's mostly within a religion. So, I mean, if you take a look at these people here, right, they're the religion. This guy is the same religion. Okay, so we're talking about the same religion when we're talking about heresy. It's not very common, you know, to, to hear people from different religions using, using, you know, this word heresy, it just wouldn't really make sense. Okay, so remember, when you want to call someone a heretic, you know, they have to sort of be the same religion as you. If, if you, there's no, you wouldn't call like, like a Muslim wouldn't call a Christian a heretic, or a Christian wouldn't call a Muslim a heretic. Rather, they would call people within their own religions heretics. You know, one Christian might call another kind of Christian a heretic, or one Muslim might call another kind of Muslim a heretic. Okay, so it's sort of within the same religion. Now, let's say this person leaves the religion. Okay, he says, I, you know, I don't want to follow the religion anymore. Okay, then, then he's called an apostate. Apostate, okay? So if you take a look at here, all these people are Hindus, right? He's a Hindu too. But one day, he decided to convert away from Hinduism and he decided to become an atheist. Okay, well then, now he's an apostate. Apostate, because he left his religion. Okay, so that's called apostasy. Okay, the idea is apostasy, but the person is called an apostate. Now, if you are one religion and you convert to another religion, then you're called a convert, a convert. Okay, and the idea is conversion, right? You're, you're, you're going from one religion to another religion, that's conversion, but you are called a convert. Okay, now guys, there are so many words I want to teach you. I made a I made a list. I thought it was a short list, but then when I actually made this video, I realized, you know, it's going to it's going to take me a long time and I don't want my videos to be too long. You know, my last video about the spiritual realm, I think that was 25 minutes. So I hope this is a little bit shorter, but I decided to make part two, okay? So in the next part, in part two, you know, we're going to look at salvation, repentance, sacrament, atonement. Hopefully that lesson won't be too long. Otherwise, I might need to make part three. I'm going to try to keep it all in part two, but, you know, there's just some really important words that uh, that I want to teach you guys. So I hope I hope you're learning something, you know, you know, I just I just want to prepare you as a good teacher, I want to prepare you for different things, you know, so you can just be be ready for any situation. If someone asks you about religion, well, then you'll be ready to talk about it, you know, salvation, sacraments, you'll know these things. If you don't know, you know, how are you going to how are you going to have a how are you going to have a conversation about these things with someone? It happens. You know, it's it's nice. It's it's a good conversation to have with people. You know, in some in some situations, it might not be appropriate or or sometimes people get get pretty uh, pretty heated, you know, you might get into a heated debate, a heated argument, you're going back and forth, you're a bit angry, you know, you're a bit, uh, we use the word heated, okay, if you get into a heated argument or a heated debate, that just means you're sort of really serious, you're having a very serious discussion, so don't, uh, don't get too serious, don't punch someone in the face, don't kill them, right? It's okay in this world, you know, a lot of people have different views. 
You know, we just need to, we need to accept each other, uh, no matter what skin color we have, whatever religion, you know, just to treat each other nice. You know, when I meet people here in Canada or anywhere I go, I treat them well. It doesn't matter to me, you know, what the religion is, what their skin color is, you know, if they're tall, short, fat, skinny, you know, I just treat everybody the same. That's how it's meant to be, right? Even you can have strong convictions. Convictions means you have you have strong ideas, strong opinions. Yes, it's true. I have strong opinions. I have strong convictions. But that doesn't mean you can't be tolerant and be accepting of other people, right? So that's uh, that's my idea. But hey, I want to know uh, for homework: Are you an atheist, an agnostic, or a theist? Remember, you're one of these, right? Even a theist, like a, like a theist, you know, you could believe in one God or a million gods or 33 million. You're still a theist. Okay, so let me know down in the comments if you are an atheist, an agnostic, or a theist. Hey, hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. <laughs> Take care.